I got to play the new Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Activision flew me down to spend the day at Treyarch Studio that I literally just got back from. And while we are limited what we can discuss, I filtered down the information that is going to be releasing as you're watching this to these top 20 points with some thoughts. Perfect whether you haven't seen anything yet or you're finding this after the trailer that should be released shortly after this video or even later right before the game comes out. But that's why I don't have any footage to show you here. It's not out yet. So first off, Omnidirectional movement will be the big talking point this year for Call of Duty. It's a big word, and at first I thought this was just a buzzword, but dude, this is cool. This is the complete unlocking of the movement direction while sprinting or evading. In every shooter that we've played, you could really only sprint forwards, but this isn't just sprinting. Whether you are sliding or even diving, you can do this in any direction. Now, they really emphasize that the goal is to improve the flow of the game more so than the speed of the game, but I do need to warn you, if you are not a fan of the movement tech currently in the game and want things to slow down, similar to how it was back in Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, let me tell you, the direction they are going here is not a U-turn back. This is not in your favor. Not completely. The more freedom that they give us also means there's going to be more movement to manage and control. Mastering a backwards or really any direction slide will mean the target that you're shooting at is also going to be more difficult to track and stay on, which I'm fearful of even saying it, but it might be time to finally switch to that controller versus only being able to slide, dodge, evade, dive, whatever forwards. But the animations and the way this all looks is so clean, of course, from what we've seen. And they did show us some cool examples. And while COD is already very smooth to play, this is going to take it to a whole nother level, especially in combination with point two. They're also adding supine prone. We've all seen the characters in Call of Duty prone, maybe even diffusing a bomb, spinning in a circle, completely flat on their belly maybe even slowly turning, legs getting stuck on the wall, prone blocked. And how silly it looks, and sometimes your legs are up on the couch or even clipping through a wall. Now, you can prone on your side and back. When you're prone on your belly and you go to turn around, if you do that 180, your character doesn't swing his legs the whole way around, instead just rolls over onto his back and you can aim behind you instantly. We've seen this from a couple of games, Rainbow Six probably most notably, and it is a far more impressive system for the way the game even looks and feels. While COD is typically a much faster paced, run and gun style game, going prone in a corner probably isn't your favorite thing to run into, or maybe it's your favorite thing to do, I don't know. It doesn't just stop with being prone on the floor. You can also, while diving in air, do a 180 flipping over to your back, we might see some of the most ridiculous dolphin dive and clips happening. More on some potential clips in a second. Number three, let's keep covering the range of the game. For progression, the classic prestige system is back. That being, once you go through the classic level one through 55 progression to unlock all your attachments, weapons, perks, you can choose to reset your character to regrind all of those levels and unlocks while earning a badge as a reward. Now, this system left a long time ago with different iterations that have occurred. In recent years, having a system where you hit a level cap and then have to wait for a new season to come out that will increase the level cap, you then progress to that cap and wait for another new season and then you progress to that, etc. This was a solution because understandably, a lot of people didn't like to lose all of their progress and unlocks. And that is what's returning here. But the devs did make an emphasis that the progression and the challenges will not reset. If you're going for gold camo or whatever, you can still work towards unlocking that on your path. They also mentioned they didn't want the punishments of prestiging to be as harsh as the original, like 100% wipe, you're starting your entire account over, but instead closer to some of the later Black Ops where we even saw systems like you could bring a gun back with you or a perk, although, they didn't give us the specifics this time around of what's going to be in it. Something that I'll be watching for and no clue how they're going to implement this for Warzone. There will be 10 prestiges and once you hit the max prestige at 10 level 55, another 1000 levels are going to unlock for a master prestige track that is all instantly available 
day one. You don't have to wait for new seasons. It's not going to cap you until you make it all the way till the end. Now, I do expect there to be a level reset like we saw when Warzone 2 came out and the levels to still track across Warzone and even Warzone mobile. They didn't say that, but that's been such big marketing and everything in the past for them. I would imagine they would keep that system for longer than a couple of months. We also still don't know all the specifics for actually unlocking the weapons. That has been a major point of contention for this game, especially when Warzone 2 came out. It has been simplified a lot since then, but we're going to have to wait and see here. Number four, continuing on with multiplayer, we're going to have 16 maps at launch, four of which are going to be strike maps, very close quarters for 1v1s, 2v2s, etc. This will be a welcome change for Many of the players, especially who were disappointed with Modern Warfare 3 last year, essentially just bringing back all the old Modern Warfare 2 maps that we've already seen before. These are all new, a lot of diverse locations, all being aftermath from the campaign locations that we'll see. But there was also no mention of Ground War or any of the big maps. This was my big focus and really satisfied a lot of my Battlefield big scale cravings for a long time. I really haven't played too much of the multiplayer the last couple of years. Five. A little on zombies here. They finally have confirmed round-based zombies returning. Infinite waves of ever-increasing difficulty that they told us are packed with secrets and cinematics. The last zombies experience, of course, being more extraction-based. Essentially, it was what DMZ was turned into zombies. Honestly, this was pretty well-received by the greater community. I had a lot of fun with it until Warzone came out. And I actually appreciated they had kind of a staggered release for it, so I could enjoy it. But there is a reason round-based zombies has had such a die-hard audience in that this has its entire own world, lore, and intense style of gameplay. Continuing with that then, six, zombies will have two maps at launch, one being in West Virginia. It looks like a nice town set in 1991, which is the setting for the game. And of course, that place is getting turned upside down. The second being across the country in a black site prison where you need to fight and escape is the way they were basically framing it. It almost sounded like an Alcatraz type vibe course rebirth island and all the zombies guys that were there that i spoke to were very excited for this both maps in the time frame are happening at the same time a bonus point here there is a zombie cast with the best voice lines that you can play ideally as when you do the map however you can play with any operator that you want seven i know you all want to know about warzone uh me too and i'll just confirm that they did not tell us anything <laughs> Unfortunately, they seem to hint that that information is going to be coming later, closer to the beta launch, which I kind of found surprising, but maybe we'll get something sooner. The biggest rumor, of course, is that Verdansk is going to be coming back, but I haven't seen any traces of that. The closest thing was back in Modern Warfare 3 during the campaign. Many have speculated that maybe Blackout's going to be returning, and I didn't see any hint of that either. But they also didn't even confirm Nuketown, and that is a complete staple of the Black Ops series. But that one they did seem to hint at a little bit. I don't know if it's coming at launch or a later time. Eight. This is a big one. Cosmetics is often a major issue, especially over the last couple of years. And they did confirm that from previous Call of Duties, there will not be carry forward to Black Ops 6 to keep the integrity of Black Ops and that feel at launch, but they will carry it forward for Warzone. And maybe that's a good thing. So there aren't a bunch of ducks with lightsabers running around day one. Also, I imagine if you're a multiplayer main, you're probably going to be disappointed by this, especially if you want to show off your staple skin in its glory, because for number nine, theater mode is returning. They specifically said to use it. The more popular that this is, the more potential that it'll be included as a standard in the franchise for the other series as well. I'd probably use it a lot more if it was out for Warzone, but we'll see on that. This is the ability, though, of course, to go back and rewatch the game that you've played, even save it for later. You have full camera control to see everybody's perspective, do free cameras so you can see how this player is so good and maybe take some notes or call him a hacker and, uh, of course, get some of the epic moments that you get. Even send it into my channel here. 10. Multiplayer is returning to the old Black Ops style systems. Score streaks are back in the main reward for staying alive. That means, of course, that you're going to have to actually play the objective, not just get kills. I always thought this was a fantastic addition to the series, although more recently they've even given you some options to take kill streaks, score streaks, etc. And as for the perk system, it's going back to the classic three perks. This is just clean simple at face value you can figure out what it is no more vests limiting which clothing you can wear and therefore the perks that you can have just more straightforward while it will be more accessible at face value though there are still options 11 
perks will have a combat specialty bonus. Within those three slots and perks that you'll take, they are color-based, and if you take the same color in each slot, you'll essentially be given a fourth perk. There's not going to be individual operators that have special abilities like we saw in Black Ops 3, or even the pick 10 system, which did get a lot of popularity because of the maximum freedom that you can have. But there is still one more wild card perk that is going to be in the game. Usually these are extra attachments for your guns, overkill for two weapons, etc. They're kind of just letting you have all of the options, but still letting you find a unique way to play. And with that, one of my favorite changes, cosmetically at least, is there is now a dedicated melee weapon slot, point 12. In addition to your primary assault rifle or SMG and a secondary pistol or a launcher, there's now a third slot. You can always have a melee weapon with you. So if you want to pull that out at the start of the match to run faster, or even just use it to go on an assassin killing spree when you feel like it, you always have that option. 13, grabbing a human shield is not just a trailer cinematic. Getting behind somebody means you don't have to execute them, at least right away. You can grab them, use them as a shield, and shoot over them as a better riot shield, but quite a bit heavier. 14, let's talk about the UI side for a bit. The main Call of Duty headquarters launcher is getting a big refresh, is how they put it. Even the friends list is being adjusted to avoid the social menu that they have, and we've already heard this from them for a number of updates since really Warzone 2 when all of this really changed over, but not that much has significantly changed. They put it up on the big screen and said, we hear the feedback, you know, it's not, um, it's not the cleanest system that they have for the menus. The main thing they said is I want it to just be cleaner and easier to get into a game quicker, which of course is a great goal, but we'll have to see how they do that. 15, as for the in-game UI, the HUD is now going to be movable. No longer is the TAC map isolated to that top left corner that we're used to seeing always in Call of Duty. You can change the corner of the map, the ammo, the utility, your equipment, and you can change it all. Although, don't expect mobile level of customization. If you've played any of that, you can move everything absolutely wherever you want. It seemed to be the way they presented it. It's gonna be preset positions, and they're gonna have a number of options for it. And they even seemed open to feedback. So if you really are so inclined, you probably could put together a model and get them to implement it. But if you come from other games, even like Battlefield, where the map's in a different corner and that's where you're used to looking, you're gonna have the option to use that now. 16, as for making the game more accessible overall, they now have a new intelligent movement system. That means that you're gonna have auto mantling, auto sprinting. The example they gave us was a player clicking the left stick to sprint, jumping down a ravine, clicking to sprint again, jumping, jumping over an edge to vault over it, finding a hole in the wall, crouching to go under it, clicking to sprint again. Now, it's just going to be you hold forwards if you are so inclined to turn this on, which I think is going to make the game much easier to just play. If you want to go the maximum speed in that direction, you just hold down forwards and it'll automatically get you over everything, vault over it, even the hole in the wall, crouch through it. And when you think about Call of Duty being as accessible of games, they try to make it for millions of people with some heavy aim assist on it. It makes a lot of sense. Although I do think for the maximum performance, you're probably gonna wanna have that off so you can really get fine tuned with the decisions you're making to not accidentally auto mantle a ledge if you're trying to go for a jump shot or whatever. Although they do even have custom settings in there for dead zones and timing of how long you hold it to trigger it and you can really customize a lot this could be good to save a lot of button presses 17 as for the story the campaign is a linear one similar to all of the other call of duty stories that we've ever experienced they did say there are going to be some open missions with options and how to approach it i won't go into any details on it for you here so you can experience it yourself, but they really just want to tell the absolute best story that they can, and Black Ops is usually a lot more mysterious with some of the approaches on it. Outside of playing the main story, you have a safe house in between the missions where you're going to be able to buy upgrades and benefits to you as you go on your missions. Point 18, the story is set in 1991, around the timing of the Gulf War, not 2001, which was a question that's brought up. There's been a lot of speculation online. Does this have anything to do with the World Trade Centers? And they did confirm that is not the case. It is staying in 1991. 19, we did get to see some of the new equipment as well. The most interesting being a homing throwing knife that you can throw and then 
have a camera following and steer where it goes that also seem to explode. Very interesting. Of course, the RCXD is making a return, classic in Black Ops. And finally, number 20, when it comes to the multiplayer, they're having dynamic death cams now in the game. Instead of there being four specific hitboxes to where, you know, if you get hit up here, death animation. Here, death animation. Head, death animation. Legs, death animation. Now there's nine different areas if you get hit in the arm, upper chest, left, right, lower abdomen. They have a lot more individual boxes that will change the way that your character reacts as well as the type of weapon that you're getting shot from. And they showed us some crazy ones, you know, getting hit by a shotgun. And it was like you got hit by a car flying backwards. The motion capture they did on this was insane. But not just the animations, but the way that you watch the animations occur. So now when you die, rather than the camera just staying isolated and glued to the ground of wherever you died, it's going to follow your ragdoll, which could be very cool for some of the execution animations that they have in the game as well. The main greater kind of point that they were talking about, it seemed, besides just the flow of the game and how you move and play, they really want to push the graphic fidelity and the quality of all of even the littlest details here. And I gotta say, a lot of it looks really insane. The animations are great, whether it's the movement for them or how they're reacting to the environment and what's happening to them, to the details of the weapons, the body, the clothing, while still giving us more control and feeling of the character and freedom to move how we want to. Even the nuance of when you go up towards the edge of a wall and you're peeking around it, the character will actually lean over. And this isn't something that's necessarily visible to the other players that's going to affect the way that you're, it's not like a proper lean that you get a control or like the lean we've seen in the past where you kind of go up to the wall and even mount onto it. There still is mounting in the game. This is just something that visually will make more sense if you know you're pushing a corner and if you're going at a slower speed, if you're sprinting around the corner, you're still going to sprint around the corner. They made some clarifying points, too, about just the engine as a whole in their system. They have their own engine. They don't even really have a specific name for it. They just call it the Call of Duty proprietary engine. But that's what they continually are building off of, which at least made me more optimistic with the way they were describing it. Now, they're just going to continue to build off of what they have and that is what they're doing more so than completely changing their system over every year or two. I'm just kind of scarred from what they changed from Warzone 2 taking out so many features, which is a reason that you hear me bring it up a lot. But talking even with other creators that were at the event, this seemed to be the biggest like early game showcase in terms of the number of people that they even brought out for it since they've done Black Ops 4 which leads me to think that they're even more excited and confident with this game in the first place. I gotta say the trailer looked insane, but <laughs> they always crush it with the marketing all of these games do, man. They kill it on that department. And while Black Ops and Treyarch are historically my favorite studio and version of the game, I've been much more excited for Warzone than multiplayer. And this is the first time that the multiplayer and story is a little bit more appealing to me. I'm just really curious how they're gonna transfer all of these things over to Warzone. And I would love to see the Omnidirection make it to there for that freedom of movement. We don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Keep it civil. We have usually a really great discussion there. What are you excited for? Dislike. And if you want to see more of my daily Call of Duty coverage, check out my Stone Mountain Plays channel. But that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. And thanks so much for watching.